Hello and welcome to this 45 minute full body stretch where we're gonna open up and stretch into the full body obviously and all we need is some really comfy clothes and nothing else. So let's get started. And we begin lying on the belly. So just come to lie down, extending the arms alongside the body, right ear into the mat and setting up for our flapping fish pose. So bending the left elbow and left knee into a 90 degree angle, keeping the right arm and leg still extended long. So it's just the left side that is bent and you can Close your eyes and start to arrive in this pose, arriving on your mat and noticing how your breath is moving right now and right away trying to bring a bit more depth to the breathing. So finding fuller inhales in and deeper exhales out. and then slowly switching sides. So start to extend the left arm and left leg long again and bringing this 90 degree bend into the right elbow and the right knee. The left ear comes into the mat, setting up here. And this pose helps to release any tension from the lower spine and to lower the blood pressure and it also has a lot of impact on our minds because it helps to really relax. So stay here, take your full deep breaths in through the nose and out through the nose. Staying for one more round of breath here before we're gonna move into some deeper poses, starting to slowly come out bringing the elbows underneath the shoulders, palms are flat in the mat, setting up for our Sphinx pose, legs hip distance apart, tops of the feet pressing into the mat and using the contact with the mat to find more openness in the chest, drawing the shoulders back, pressing into the palms as if you wanna drag the mat towards you to bring the chest and the heart through the shoulders staying super active here and if it feels good you can start to integrate some circles into the neck. Moving into one direction, lifting the chin up and all the way down and then reversing the direction moving into the opposite way. Bringing ease to layers of tension. And then slowly coming back to center and bringing the left forearm diagonal into the mat, bending into the right knee and getting hold of the right foot with the right hand. Inhale to kick into your hand with the foot and exhale to draw the heel towards the right butt cheek. If you want more, you can start to lift the left elbow off the mat, pressing into the left palm, but try to not collapse into the left shoulder. So keep drawing the shoulder down and away, full breath in and exhale, slowly release and switch sides. So now we bring the right forearm into the mat and bending into the left knee, getting hold of the left foot. Inhale to kick the foot into the hand and exhale to draw the heel in. And again, try to not collapse into that right shoulder. So keep drawing the shoulder down. If you want more, you can start to lift the right elbow off the mat, pressing into the palm, full breath in and exhale to release. And we'll move a little deeper into the shoulders, extending the arms into a capital T shape and then lifting onto the left fingertips to roll onto the right hip. The right arm is still extended long. You can either stay here or step the left foot behind the right leg and maybe also stepping the right foot into the mat, 
and you can also lift the left arm up and over reaching for opposite hands behind the spine or just staying wherever you are keeping the right ear in the mat breathing into the right shoulder and slowly extending the legs and rolling back onto the belly coming onto the right fingertips left arm is extended long rolling onto the left hip and if you like to go deeper you can step the right foot behind the left leg and to go even deeper maybe even stepping the left foot into the mat and reaching the right arm up and over searching for opposite fingers or just staying wherever you're feeling a stretch in the left shoulder left ear is down in the mat full breath in full breath out and slowly releasing and extending the legs long rolling back onto the belly hands underneath the shoulders and lifting back up to our tabletop position with the hands underneath the shoulders knees underneath the hips and from here we're gonna place the left palm one handprint back and one handprint to the left and reach the right arm to the left corner of the mat melting the chest down and finding a stretch in the right shoulder the arm for me it gets even deeper if I keep my head off the mat but if it's very intense you can bring the forehead to the mat and you can try to roll onto the outer blade of the right hand so pressing the right outer blade into the mat and slowly walking the hand back and bringing the right palm one hand print back and one hand print to the side left hand extends long towards the right corner of the mat and then bringing the chest towards the mat and maybe bringing the forehead down or keeping the head lifted and stretching into the left shoulder the upper arm and from here you can again try and roll onto the outer blade of that left palm pressing it into the mat and slowly lifting back up hands underneath the shoulders knees underneath the hips inhale to drop the belly arch the spine gaze up cow pose exhale chin to the chest rounding and pressing the palms into the mat inhale to drop the belly lifting the gaze and exhale to round navel in chin to the chest and you can move in your own pace now maybe closing the eyes and connecting the breath to the movement and the next time that you're in your cow pose stay there arch the spine and start to walk the hands to the front of the mat to come to puppy's pose heart melting pose either bringing the forehead down or chin and chest down into the mat the hips are either directly above the knees or shifted a bit further forward to bring the chest closer towards the mat and breathing fully here into the neck the upper spine the arms maybe all the way into the fingertips this is the perfect counter stretch for sitting in front of the computer and in this pose we're able to access the upper spine which is quite hard to target because we usually rely on the flexibility of the lower spine so we want to stay in this pose for a bit longer to get the full benefits and now if you want to move a little bit deeper into the neck you can come onto the elbows and rest the chin in your palms maybe moving the elbows a little bit further forward and then stretching into the neck the throat letting the chest melt down staying here for three more rounds of breath and if it's too intense you can always come back to your normal puppy's pose and then slowly starting to make your way out of the pose walking the hands back underneath the shoulders 
knees underneath the hips. And now let your shoulders drop, so collapsing into the shoulders. And exhale, press into your palms to round the shoulders out. Inhale to collapse into the shoulders and exhale to round, finding our protraction. And just moving back and forth here a couple of times to find the right alignment. So what we want is that protraction of the shoulders, rounding out. And next time that you're there, start to step the feet back, coming into a high plank with the shoulders protracted. The palms are directly underneath the shoulders and notice where your hips are. If the hips are collapsing or maybe sticking out, we want to keep the hips in one line with the shoulders and we're high on the toes, so coming on the tops of the feet and keeping the shoulders protracted. That's the most stable pose for the shoulders to be in. Taking one more breath here. And with the exhale, lift your hips up and back, coming into downward facing dog, not changing anything with the feet or the hands. So keep feet and hands exactly where they are. And that is the perfect distance from the feet to the hands in our down dog. So you can always find first your high plank and then your down dog to find the right distance. And then bring your gaze between the hands and we start to tiptoe our way to the front of the mat, bringing the feet hip distance apart, bending into the knees and bringing the hands to the opposite elbow, gently rocking from side to side, letting the head hang heavy and there's no reason to keep the leg straight. So find as much of a bend as you like, especially if you have issues with your lower spine, because by keeping the legs fully straight, we create a lot of tension in the lower spine. And we of course want to avoid that. And slowly letting go of the elbows, pressing into the feet and starting to roll up vertebrae by vertebrae, lifting the whole spine up and rolling the shoulders up and back whenever you arrive at the top and bringing the feet to touch, keeping a slight distance between the heels, arms by the sides, finding Tadasana, mountain pose. Inhale to reach the arms up, palms to touch and exhale to fold, head comes down, bend your knees. Inhale, halfway lift, keeping the hands on the mat or bringing them onto the shins or the thighs to find maximum length in the spine. One more full breath here. And exhale to fold, rebend the knees. And again, inhale, halfway lift, finding your version, lengthening the spine. Exhale to fold, head down. And last time, inhale, halfway lift. And exhale, folding forward, planting the palms and stepping the left foot all the way back, lowering the left knee into the mat. Untuck your back toes and if you feel any pain in the left knee, you can double up your mat. So making sure the knee is comfortable. Right ankle is underneath the right knee. Fingertips are framing the right foot. And from here we start to shift forwards and backwards, so moving from our low lunge to our half split and just nice and easy, so being super gentle and just feeling into the right hamstring, you can keep a bend in the knee when you move back, feeling it out. And the next time that we're in our low lunge, bring the fingertips down and start to lift the gaze up, inhaling in and exhale to drop the chin to the chest, rounding the spine and breathing into the left hip flexor. Inhale to lift the gaze, looking up. Exhale, rounding the neck, chin to the chest. And continue here with your movement, lifting the gaze and bringing the chin in. If you want more, you can tuck the left toes and lift the left knee off the mat. And again, continuing with our movement. Breathing fully into that left hip flexor, the left quad. And slowly lowering 
the left knee back down and shifting the hips back half split making sure the left hip is over the left knee so maybe we have to move the foot a little bit further forward and now we want to find length in the spine so try to minimize any rounding in the spine and folding over that right leg but still prioritizing length so stay as high as you need to here and keep the right foot flexed so we want to also bring a stretch into the right calf muscle you can always keep a bend in the right knee and we want to stay here and breathe fully and deeply into the right hamstring the calf Still lengthening the spine, full breath in and full breath out and then re-bending into the right knee, planting the left palm down into the mat, bending into the left knee and grabbing the left foot with the right hand, moving into a quad stretch. So draw the heel in with the right palm and you can lift onto the left fingertips find a bit more height breathing into the left quad the psoas and slowly releasing the foot back down and bringing both palms to the inner right foot and heel toeing the right foot to the right side of the mat hands are underneath the shoulders tuck the left toes and lift the knee off the mat and start to shift forwards and backwards Maybe starting to draw some circles into the hips. I really love that to just feel it out and gently opening the hip. And then lowering the left knee back down. Inhale, reach the right arm up and bring the right palm to the inner right thigh, opening the leg, drawing the knee away from you and coming onto the outer blade of the right foot. Breathing fully into the right hip, keeping the chest open, full breath in, full breath out, placing the right palm back into the mat and now either staying here lifted on the palms or lowering down onto the forearms for a deeper version of our lizard pose. And if you still want more, you can extend the arms wide. So bringing the right arm underneath the right leg, left arm extended long and bringing the forehead down, breathing fully into the hip. And slowly walking the palms back, lifting back up, tuck the left toes and engage into the leg to step the left foot to the outside of the left hand to the front coming to malasana yogi squat hands in front of the heart we want to aim for bringing the heels towards the mat but if your heels are lifted here it's no problem but try to find length in the spine you can press the elbows into the inner thighs to find more length and staying for one more full breath in Exhale, plant the palms and start to lift the hips up and staying here in this mini extended forward fold for a moment. And then heel toeing the feet back together, folding over the legs, head down. Inhale, halfway lift, find your version, lengthen the spine. Exhale to fold. Inhale, rising all the way up, high mountain palms to touch and exhale hands to heart and arms by your sides again inhale reaching all the way up high mountain exhale to fold head down inhale halfway lift long spine exhale plant the palms and step the right foot all the way back lowering the right knee into the mat untuck your toes making sure the left ankle is underneath the left knee and the right knee is comfortable you can always double up your mat and then start to shift the hips backwards and forwards moving from our half split to low lunge feeling it out here so nothing too intense you can keep a bend in the left knee when you move back and just try to feel into the hamstring gently starting to wake it up 
and then last round next time that you're in your low lunge staying there bringing the fingertips around the foot and starting with the movement of the head so inhale start to lift the gaze and exhale chin to the chest rounding the neck inhale to look up and exhale to round find your own pace feeling into the right hip flexor when you're rounding and keep breathing fully into the full circumference of the rib cage. And if you want more, you can tuck the right toes, lifting the right knee off the mat and continuing with that same movement of the head. Full deep breaths into the right hip flexor. Last round. And from here, slowly lowering the right knee down into the mat and shifting the hips back for our half split. Right hip is on top of the right knee and the fingers are framing the right shin. You can always keep a bend in the knee. We want to find maximum length in the spine. So try to stay as lifted as you need to, to find that length in the spine. And then from here, finding length with every inhale and folding a little deeper with the exhale. Keeping the left foot flexed to stretch into the left calf muscle and breathing through the discomfort here. So full breaths in, full breaths out. And from here, rebending into the left knee planting the right palm down and bending into the right knee so getting hold of the right foot with the left hand and then drawing that heel down to find our quad stretch keeping the chest lifted you can come onto the right fingertips finding the stretch and gently releasing the foot back down and heel toeing the left foot to the left side of the mat so that we can bring both palms underneath the shoulders tuck the right toes lifting the knee off the mat and start to shift forwards and backwards maybe starting to draw some circles into the hip finding what feels good and when you had enough lowering that knee back down reaching the left arm up open the chest and exhale place the hand to the inner left thigh and start to open the leg rolling onto the outer blade of the left foot and then keep drawing that leg away from you melting the right hip down and gently releasing bringing the palms Bring the palm back down and you can now either stay here or move a little deeper into our lizard pose coming onto the forearms finding your version whatever you can sustain for the next couple of breaths if you want to go even deeper you can extend the left arm underneath the left leg and the right arm long to the side as well maybe bringing the forehead down bring the palms back lift the right knee and step the right foot to the front to our yogi squat malasana hands in front of the heart press your elbows into the inner thighs finding more length and you can now either stay here that's a great place to be or we can try to find a bind extending the right hand to the side reaching the left arm up and then from here bringing the left hand behind the back and reaching the right arm around the leg and searching for opposite hand behind the spine maybe finding the bind and then opening the shoulder full breath in full breath out hands back to heart and going for the other side so extending the left hand to the side and reaching the right arm up 
and maybe bringing the right hand behind the spine, left hand around the left leg and then grabbing your hands behind the back, drawing the right shoulder back, opening the chest. Full breath in and full breath out to release the bind, hands back to heart center and then plant the palms down lifting the hips up and heel toeing the feet back together and finding our halfway lift on the inhale long spine and exhale to fold. Inhale rising all the way up, high mountain, palms to touch and exhale hands to heart inhale reach all the way up and then bring the hands back behind the spine interlacing the palms opening the chest draw the arms away from you inhale here and exhale bend the knees and drape the upper body onto the legs so stomach onto the thighs forehead towards the shins and reaching the arms up above the head trying to keep the palms touching and you can keep as much of a bend here in the knees as you need to find that stomach to thigh connection. One more breath in and exhale release the bind and find your halfway lift. Exhale plant the palms and step it back to high plank. Always taking a moment to make sure we're in the right alignment high on the toes, palms underneath the shoulders, finding our protraction in the shoulder blades. Full breath in and exhale, lifting the hips up, downward facing dog and moving a little deeper into the outer hips now. Bring the right knee to your chest and then the right shin down into the mat, setting up for our half pigeon. Left leg is extended long behind. The further away you move the heel from the sit bones, the deeper the stretch. So find your pose here, coming onto the fingertips to square off the hips. Inhale, lifting the chest and exhale, melting over the right shin, bringing the forehead down. And if there's any pain in the right knee, definitely make sure to come out of the pose and find a reclined figure four. We don't ever, ever, never want to have pain in the knee. So making sure of that and fully surrendering to the pose. And you can either stay here or if you want to move a bit deeper, you can walk the hands over to the left and bring the upper body more on top of the right foot. Breathing fully into the outer right hip. And then slowly starting to come out of the pose, bringing the palms back and lifting up, rolling onto the right hip and extending the left leg long in front. And from here, bringing the right ankle on top of the left thigh, fingertips behind the spine into the mat. And we bend into the left knee and lift the chest up. So try to not collapse into the palms here, but staying lifted with the chest, bringing it closer towards the shin and keeping the right foot flexed to protect the knee. And the closer we move the hips to the left heel, the deeper the stretch. And now you can either stay here or come into double pigeon by bringing the left shin down into the mat and stacking the shins on top of each other. So the right ankle is on top of the left knee, left ankle underneath the right knee. If that is too much, you can either move the left heel in a bit or bring the right foot down into the mat and bring the shins parallel towards each other. So find your version here. It doesn't matter how deep you can get into the pose. It matters that we have the same sensation of a deep stretch in the outer right hip. And now you can start to walk the hands further forward, keeping length in the spine and folding over the shins, breathing fully into the discomfort. I know this can be a very intense stretch. Try to stay with it. 
breathing fully maybe lowering all the way down onto the forearms And then start to slowly come back out of the pose. And from here we place the right foot to the outside of the left thigh. Setting up for a seated spinal twist. If your hips are lifting off the mat you can extend the left leg long. Otherwise keep the heel in. And either hugging the left arm around the right leg or reaching the left arm up. And bringing it to the outside of the right thigh. Gaze goes over the right shoulder, fingertips are behind the spine in the mat, finding length with every inhale and twisting a little deeper with the exhale. And then turning through center over to the left for a counter twist and Extending the right leg long now and bringing the left sole of the foot to the inner right thigh. The right arm comes down or right hand onto the left knee. And reaching the left arm up and over, finding a lateral stretch into the left side body, the left waist. Relax the head. Breathing fully. And now we keep everything the same, just reaching the left arm towards the left as if we're searching for something next to us on the left side. And relax the head and bring ease to layers of tension here in the neck, the collarbone. And then drop the chin to the chest, plant the left palm into the mat, swinging the right arm from right to left, lifting the hips, reaching the right hand back, open the chest, full breath in. And exhale to lower the hips back down. And now turning the whole upper body to face the extended right leg, sitting up tall, inhale reaching the arms up and exhale folding over that right leg. Getting hold of the foot, the ankle, the shin and finding length with the inhale, exhale folding a little deeper. Full breaths into that right hamstring. And then starting to lift back out of the pose. And bringing the soles of the feet to touch for a Baddha Konasana. The heels are about in one line with the knees. Get hold of the feet and open the feet like a book. Finding length in the spine and starting to lean forward. But just going as far as you can still maintain a long spine. Whenever you feel like you're rounding, try to back off a little. And you can also bring the forearms down into the mat. And breathing fully into the inner hips here. Relax the neck. And lifting back up, crossing the ankles, rolling over the knees and stepping it back to our downward facing dog and moving to the other side. So we bring the left knee into the chest, left chin down into the mat, Setting up for our half pigeon, extending the right leg long behind. And again, finding the right distance of the heel to your sit bones. Coming onto the fingertips, inhale, lift the chest. And exhale, start to melt all the way down, bringing the forehead down. And surrendering fully into that pose. And if you did so on the other side, you can also start again to walk the hands over to the right, melting the upper body onto the left foot. 
breathing fully into the left outer hip. And then start to press into the palms, lifting back up, coming out of the pose, rolling onto the left hip and extending the right leg long in front, placing the left ankle on top of the right thigh and flexing into the left foot, fingertips behind the spine, bending into the right knee and lifting the chest up bringing it closer towards the left shin and maybe moving the hips a little closer to the right heel. Full breaths into that outer left hip. And from here we're gonna move into the double pigeon. So bringing the right shin down into the mat, bringing the left ankle on top of the right knee and the right ankle underneath the left knee or bringing it closer in to decrease the stretch. Or you can also place the left foot down into the mat, bringing the shins as parallel as possible. So again, finding your version here, it's about finding that sensation in the left outer hip. And maybe you can start to walk the fingertips forward, keeping length in the spine. Full breaths into that discomfort in the outer hip. come all the way down onto the forearms but just try and find your maximum depth here now we start to lift back up planting the left foot to the outside of the right thigh Right heel comes in or extending the leg if the sit bones are not grounded. Left fingertips into the mat, reaching the right arm up and bringing the right arm on top of the left thigh or hugging around that leg. Gaze over the left shoulder, finding length with every inhale and twisting a little deeper with the exhale. Last breath in here. With the exhale moving through center over to the right, counter twist and then coming back to center and extending the left leg long, bringing the right sole of the foot to the inner left thigh, left arm either to the inside of the left leg or placing the hand onto the right knee and reaching the right arm up and over for our side stretch, relax the head and breathe fully into the right waist, the rib cage, the shoulder. One more full breath in and exhale, keep everything the same, just reaching that right arm up and over to the right as if we're searching for something on the floor next to us. Letting the head hang super heavy here, maybe finding some movement in the neck to find that traction in the right side of the neck, the collarbone. And gently dropping the chin to the chest, planting the right palm into the mat, swinging the left arm from left to right to lift the hips, reaching the arm back, opening the chest. And with the exhale, bringing the hips back down and facing the whole upper body towards that extended leg. Sitting up tall, inhale, lifting up and exhale, finding our forward fold over the left leg and either getting hold of the foot or the ankle or the shin, whatever's accessible and keeping length in the spine. So try to maybe find a bit more length with every inhale and folding a little deeper with the exhale. And then starting to lift back up, 
and again bringing the soles of the feet to touch but this time in a big diamond shape so move the heels away from the pubic bone either grabbing the big toes or wrapping the hands around the feet and then rounding the spine send the hip bones back chin to the chest and melting the head down finding that full rounding of the spine letting completely go of the neck here so no tension in the neck and starting to lift back up and we're gonna move to a wall now so if you don't have a wall space close to you right now it doesn't matter then you can just find your straddle pose bringing the legs wide sitting up tall and finding length in the spine if you do have a wall, then we can do the same thing against the wall, bringing the hips as close to your wall as possible and lifting the legs up. And from here, opening the legs wide for our straddle with the wall and letting the inner thighs fully relax and melt down here. And this pose is not just stretching, but it's also so relaxing for our nervous system. You can do this also at night before going to bed. It feels so good to do it before sleeping, to just calm down. If it feels good here, you can also interlace your arms above the head, grabbing for opposite elbows, or just resting the arms by your sides. And then try to focus fully on your breathing we're gonna stay here for about two more minutes full breath in and with the exhale bring your hands to your thighs and bring the legs back together hugging the knees into the chest and rolling onto one side coming out of the pose if you were in your seated straddle pose stay there because that's where we're now all gonna meet so find your straddle sitting up tall and maybe starting to walk the hands further forward finding a bit more depth but just lowering as far as you can still maintain length in the spine if you're feeling like you're rounding a lot you can always bring a pillow or cushion or something underneath the sit bones staying for last two rounds of breath you're doing amazing. This was a lot of inner hip stretching. Gently starting to come back out, bringing the legs back together. And from here, extending the legs long in front, setting up for a final forward fold, removing any fleshy bits from underneath the sit bones. Inhale, reaching the arms up and exhale, folding over the legs. And I really love to find my stomach to thigh connection here so if you need to bend your knees super much it does not matter but we want to bring the stomach to the thighs finding length and from here you can then start to maybe walk the feet further forward holding on to the big toes and melting the forehead onto the shins
last full round of breath into the backs of the legs. And starting to lift back up, coming out of the pose and just gently crossing the ankles, bringing the hands onto the knees, rolling the shoulders up towards the ears and down the spine and take a moment to close your eyes, feeling into the body, just noticing how you're feeling right now and bringing the hands in front of the heart, thanking yourself for taking the time to practice. And I thank you for choosing me to practice with today. I'm so happy about that and I send you so much love and hope I'll see you soon again. Bye bye. And if you haven't already, make sure to subscribe to my channel to always stay up to date with all the new videos. And you can also always reach out to me. I'd love to connect. You can find me on Instagram. And I hope I'll see you soon.